Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this gave me my review for Awkward Season 4, Episode 6, Crowning Moments. And this episode for me, I still really did enjoy it, but I had quite a few problems with this episode. Probably the weakest episode of the season. Yes, it was still great, because it's awkward, so it still was great. I'm not saying it wasn't great, because it really was. It was still great, but my problem with this episode was just that there was too much silly stuff in this episode. And I, I'm Sometimes it's fine to have silly stuff in an episode, but this episode, really, there was too much silly stuff, in my opinion. I felt like they really needed to cut down on that because there was way too much silly stuff in this episode. I enjoyed a lot of the stuff in this episode. I really did. I'm looking forward to the next episode, which I have a feeling is probably going to be the best episode of the season, uh, just when I'm looking at the promo. My main problem in this episode was... Remember the whole Sadie, Maddie, uh, Eva thing from the last episode? That's not even acknowledged in this episode, and that was a huge problem for me with this episode because I really enjoyed that whole plot in this episode, and they didn't even talk about it once in this episode, so I was really disappointed by that. But let's just get this episode because I overall really enjoyed it. Um, the main focus of this episode basically had to do with this thing called um, Mr. P.H. Apollos P.H. Uh, H.S., which was a lot like um, my school. We did Mr. Morris Knowles. Basically, <clears throat> the way Mr. Mis Mr. Morris Knowles worked was it was a bunch of guys. You know, they they bunch of senior guys. They auditioned for it. They did like a uh, talent competition. They did a um, swimsuit competition. A lot of fun stuff. You know, just think of, like a girls pageant but with guys. I went to see this. It was a lot of fun. It was really really funny. And, you know, if your high school ever does it, it probably was a lot of fun for you, too. And, you know, it was, it was fun that they... I was I was really looking forward to them seeing how they do that on Awkward, because I really enjoyed doing it. And it's probably something I'm going to do my senior year, because I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, but uh, let's get to this episode. So first, we're going to talk about Jenna. Um, Jenna is um, very... Uh, you can see that Jenna's much more positive now. You know how Jenna's usually very down on herself a lot? Well, you know, she's not like that anymore, you know, because Luke has really changed her. He's made her more evolved, better. She already she feels like she's already in college because Jenna and Luke are basically together now, which I like. I like this Luke guy. I really do because he's not like, he's not like, um, he's not like Colin who basically was just a rebellious guy. This is a guy that genuinely does care about Jenna and understands that she's still in high school. He says sometimes I do forget that you're still in high school. But he does really care about her, and that's what I do really like about this guy, is that he really does care about Jenna, and he wants to help her overall, and he's overall a really good guy. Um, basically, uh, you know, she's more involved, and I, I like that they're together, I really do. And eventually, though, her, um, her dad answers her phone, and he says he called and threatened to have Luke arrested. He tells her she's a child and is out 45 minutes past her curfew. He tells her to get home now and clean her room, which is very typical of a... Of a of a dad of a daughter to do this because you know they're 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 usually very uh protective of their daughter so i wasn't surprised that kevin did that with jenna because you know he's usually very protective of her so i, I think that part was definitely pretty funny um we do find out that jenna's very annoyed with being sadie's as she calls it cheer bitch so she's very annoyed by that and she's just she's really annoyed she's tired of it and uh honestly i i think i i would have wanted to see jenna be a cheerleader this year i thought that's what would happen to her but you know, that's not what happened. You know, she's basically forced to be uh, Sadie's slave, basically. It's really bad, because Sadie throws a pom-pom in her face. You know, you know Sadie hates Jenna, so, you know, that whole thing's going on, which I, I enjoyed that overall. Uh, but Maddie is stressed out about um, the scout being there. His parents are hassling the scout, and Jake asks if his parents are back together. He says they hate each other as much as ever. But they're presenting a united front for the scout because that's how they do things there. So, basically, Maddie's pissed. And uh, this was just, this was really big. Because you know how Maddie's really been just like, I love Maddie's storyline these past two episodes. I really have. These past two episodes, I really have loved them. As I said, they've been significantly darker than the other episodes have been. I really enjoyed that about um, these past two episodes. Um, and we find he was um, in a soccer game, and uh, he misses the goal. So that's huge, because that's what Maddie does best, is soccer. He plays soccer, he's done it all his life, and he just missed a goal. So he's really just 
Maddie is really pissed off. You can clearly see that Maddie is really down himself. He's really pissed off, and uh, he has a reason to be because you know he's really mad at his mom. His mom is uh, cursing out at him, and she has a reason to do that. I mean, it's kind of reasonable, but I, at the same time, I think the thing is that really, um, you know, the, the really, um, as far as uh, Maddie's mom goes. She did not tell him about the adoption, so that's why he's so pissed. Because, obviously, that whole thing, he's, he's in not-give-a-shit mode, as I've talked about before. He doesn't care about anything. He doesn't. He doesn't care about a single thing, and it's really sad, but it's just like... Well, you know, that happened. So, Jenna then asked Maddie if he has picked a talent for the show. And, you know, it's a pretty um good question, because, you know, she wants to at least talk to him. And, uh... All he says is that he heard that she's in two older guys now, and he approves of it. You know, he tells her that's fine, and I think he can clearly tell that she's over him, and he's he's fine with her dating Luke. He's fine with it. He does not tell. He does not answer her question though. So I was just like, all right, fine, don't answer her question. Uh, so then Luke skypes Jenna, says she misses him, and they're about to have Skype sex, but then her parents come in, and Lacey then invites Luke to come down for the um, Mr. Palace Hills pageant. And Hill says he'll come down. Jenna says he doesn't have to, but, you know, he, her, his, her parents insist on coming, so he decides to come. Uh, so that, that's what he does. So then what happens is the, uh, the competition then starts. But Maddie then tells, Maddie then finally answers Jenna's question. Because, you know, her, his, her question was, what do you plan on doing in the, uh, competition? You know, what was your town competition going to be? And, you know, I think it was a pretty reasonable question. And he tells Jenna that he's planning on doing stand-up comedy, which I thought that's that's a good talent for Maddie because, you know, Maddie be good at that. But um, his mother says, no, 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 you are not doing that. You're going to embarrass yourself. It is not a good thing for you to do, and you just, you should not do that. And you know what? Honestly, it's not up to you. It's not up to you. This is what Maddie wants to do. It's not up to you. And basically, he then tells her, you know, he's not trying to win. He doesn't, he doesn't want to win. He just wants to have fun, which honestly... When you do something like this, it's not about winning. It's about the effort you put into what you're doing. It's not about the win. It's about the effort you put into it. And he says, why are you so worried? And she says, because I'm your mom. And then he says, oh, yeah, well, whatever. And then he walks off. Because basically he's saying, you know, wow, what a mom you are. You're not even, like, encouraging me here. You're supposed to be my mom. You're supposed to give me helpful advice and to help me become a better person, and all you're making me do is just, you're not letting, making me care about anything, you're making me very, go very down on myself, and it's your fault, so, that's what Maddie's really upset about, is he's really mad at his mom, and I, I really enjoyed that, actually, in this episode, I really liked all the scenes of seeing that happen, I thought that was definitely really good. So then, a really funny scene, we see Aunt Allie, who honestly... Aunt Allie needs to go. She ruined a lot of the good, best scenes in the episode because she's so silly. I, I understand the purpose of her character, but this episode, I did not like her character. I really did not. Um, I really did not like her character in this episode. I, I, I didn't at all. Um, they're they're about to, uh, you know, Kevin is actually helping out Jenna at her um, school with the whole, um, with the pageant, and I, I like seeing that with Kevin. I thought that was cool. Um... He wants to help out the, uh, the, the, the boys become better dancers, and, um, he's wearing this shirt, um, Lacey's about, you know, Lacey's trying to rip it off of him, because obviously she's getting, you know, a little turned on from that, but then Luke comes, but then guess who comes in? Luke then comes in, and Jenna is humiliated, she then head to school, and now it's time for the pageant, so the guys all come out, they, you know, they do their little opening dance thing, and, um, the ladies are screaming, you know, that sort of thing, and basically... Then what happens is uh, it's time for Maddie to go on, and when Valerie introduces Maddie, uh, he says, basically, at first he's actually doing a good job with his stand-up comedy. It seems like, you know, he is going to do a good job with it, and it's going to be fun. That's what it seems like it's going to be. It seems like it's going to be a fun thing, and uh, the crowd is loving it, actually. He's actually doing a great job. He's talking about doing his college applications, like a first date. He says he has to drop $80 to get really rejected, and uh, he's actually doing a pretty good job, um, so... But then what happens is as soon as he sees his mom, he talks about how turning 18 comes with responsibility, like voting and downloading porn without having to lie about your age. And then he says his mom doesn't like it because, you know, he sees that his mom is not laughing at anything. She does not find any of this funny, and he's really upset. So he says, oh, what's the matter, mom? You don't like it? Right. Well, I, you know what's so funny? My mom thinks it's so funny that 18 years... <laughs> She has hid from me 
that I have no idea who I am and whose genes I have. And I mean, that is a huge thing. He just admitted to his mom that he found out he was adopted. And I mean, you can just see the look on her face of the guilt. I mean, really, his mother, he is a horrible mother. I'm just going to admit right now, Maddie is a horrible mother. Um, because she doesn't care at all. She doesn't seem to care much about him at all. So, I mean, definitely it was really bad. And then it gets really, really bad from here. Because after this, he really starts to embarrass Jenna. He talks about how, um, you know, he talks about the whole time when, uh, she, um, his parents come over for dinner. And they called her a slut. And for going on birth control. Then they threw him out. And then when he moved in with her, and he, you know, he couldn't, he, you know, she couldn't, um, she couldn't go to the bathroom for a week, and then she farted and everything, and then he makes a fart sound, and Jenna is really humiliated. She's telling him to get off the stage and everything, and, um, now he asks how his mom, how his, asks his mom how he's doing that, how he's doing, and, um, Allie had to ruin it. She really did. I did not like this next scene. Allie just shouts, show us your balls. That was really immature. Honestly, you can tell the writers are different, because the writing's a little bit more immature when it comes to the laughs, um. I didn't find that really funny at all. I thought that was honestly really stupid. But Jenna follows Maddie off stage, and she's really upset. She has a reason to be. She's a, re it's a, she's a reasonable reason to be, because Maddie just embarrassed her, not only in front of all these people that didn't even know about half of those scenarios that happened, but she also embarrassed her in front of Luke. You know, Luke was in that audience watching the performance. This is the guy that she cares about, and he got up and walked away, and she thinks it's because of, uh, you know, because of that, and... She's really upset, and she says all her high school dramas come out, and Luke couldn't handle it, so he left, and that's why he left. But then, that might not be the case. Because um, Jenna walks out, and she's really upset. She says she's not Jenna 2.0 anymore, she's just Jenna. And then Luke wa waits outside. She says she knows her life is embarrassing, and he says, You know what? I sympathize with you. I left because I wanted to cheer you up. And you know, this guy is just... Honestly, this really shows that Luke, in my opinion, is a better guy than Maddie. I know you guys want Maddie and, J and Jenna together. I, personally, I do still like Maddie and Jenna together. I don't like this side of Maddie, though. Maddie is really ruining himself. He just embarrassed Jenna. I mean, even though Luke was okay with it, he still embarrassed her. He had no right to do that. Jenna did not ask him to do that. And he had no right to do that. So, honestly, I don't like Maddie at this point. And, basically... He, Luke tells Jenna that he remembers the high school drama, and he remembers, you know, he remembers the drama, and he says, I was never as cool as you were. And I remember, basically he's telling her, I sympathize with you because I remember that high school drama. I remember what it's like. You have no reason, I have no reason to be upset with you because I went through the same exact thing. And then he kisses her, and then guess who watches? Maddie sees it, and just, you can see not only the sadness on his face, but the disappointment on his face, because he knows... That the reason that, you know, that Jenna's over him is because of him. He knows what he did was wrong. And I really think that now that he's seen this has happened, this is going to um, help him, you know, come back to his usual self and help him possibly find himself. I think Jenna ultimately is going to be the one that helps him find himself. Not yet, because in the promo for the next episode, we saw that he still is the same way. Like, not caring. But I do think something drastic is going to happen. And I think it's going to involve that picture. Because we didn't see too much with that picture in this episode. And I think that's because they're going to wait to show that picture in the next episode. Because it's going to be probably the game-changing episode of the season. And I can't wait for that. But I love Jenna's plot in this episode. Really love where Jenna, Maddie, and his plot are going. I love this new guy for Jenna. I love the character of Luke. He's a great character. I really hope we see more of him. Because he's probably the perfect boyfriend for Jenna at this point. Jenna's just so much more mature than Maddie at this point that I just, I really prefer this guy over Maddie. I really do. As much as I like Maddie's character, I prefer this guy. I really do. Um, let's go to Tamara. Tamara, honestly, I feel like in this episode, we're not supposed to sympathize with Tamara. They want us to sympathize with Jake, and honestly, at this point, I do sympathize with Jake. Tamara, to me, I, she's acting childish, and Jenna, as I said, is much more mature now. So, Tamara finds out that Jenna is, you know... I mean, Jenna finds out that Tamara is still catfishing Jake. And she says, look, I understand why you're doing this, but you need to stop. If you really care about Jake, just tell him how you feel. And Tamara says she can't do that because, you know, she knows that he's really... All the texts that she sent Jake was for Autumn. 
So she doesn't want to stop yet. She's not ready. And Jake even is telling Maddie how he's really into Autumn. And Maddie is worried about, you know, catfishing problems. Which I thought was kind of funny because, you know, the show Catfish is on MTV. So I find that to be kind of funny. But overall, I, I you know, thought that was a very interesting scene. So then what happens is Jenna calls Tamara. Um, but, of course, she's pretending to be Autumn. Now, I was wondering to myself, what would happen when Jake called Tamara, you know, when she was Autumn? Tamara has decided to disguise herself with probably the worst Australian accent I've ever heard. It is literally the worst Australian accent I think I've ever heard in my life. It is a terrible accent, and um, she's doing a terrible accent. You know, she tells Jenna that Jake invited Autumn to the pageant, and Autumn is going to show, but then they have to leave, because obviously... There is no Autumn. It's all Tamara, and she has to pretend to be Autumn. So she's really in a huge predicament here, and she doesn't really know. She really has that whole thing throughout the whole episode. So, And at the same time, she's hosting the pageant. So, I mean, it's pretty big here. I definitely thought that was really big. And uh, what ends up happening, though, is uh, Jake is actually participating in this uh, competition. Um, Jake is actually participating in the uh, competition, which I like seeing. He actually sings a song to Autumn, and Tamara is happy about that. Um, and then Jake calls Tamara, and she has to pretend to be Autumn because, you know, she has to pretend that Autumn is in that audience and that she saw it. Um, and it seems like everything is okay. Uh, Tamara mutes her phone. She's talking to Jenna. It seems like everything's going fine. She calls him again, and then she says, hold on a second, you know, as Autumn. But then she yells out stage direction, and Jake hears it, and then he says, Tamara? And then he finally realizes that she was the one that catfished him, and I was so happy that he found out, because honestly, how much longer could did Tamara think this could have gone on for? How much longer does she think this could have gone on for? Um, she knows that it couldn't have gone on for that much longer, and he's pissed at her. He really is, and he has all the right to be upset with her. I'm going to say that right now. Jake has all the right to be upset. He wasn't told to do this. He had no idea about this. He did not tell Tamara to do this. He did not tell Tamara to even do anything to him. It's all Tamara's fault. It really is. The reason that all of, you know, that Jake was so upset with her was because it was her fault. And she even tries to chase him down, and Jake does not want to hear it. He's really upset with her, and he says it, it's it's over, just like it was when he dumped her. And, you know, she says how, but you saw that stuff to me, and he says, because it was for Autumn. So, as far as that happened, they are basically done. Um, So, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Tamara and Jake, because, you know, the whole Autumn thing is over now, which I'm actually happy about, because I probably thought that storyline was really, really, uh, it was really interesting, but I liked the way they did that in this episode. I thought it was definitely really cool. And, you know, Jake's participating in the, in the, competi in the um, pageant. He's about to win, but he doesn't show up because he was just too upset to show up. And I thought that was just a really, really big thing there. And I really enjoyed that plot overall. I was really into that plot in this episode. <laughs> so, let's talk about uh, the filler bullshit in this episode that I did not like at all. Sadie, Lissa, Kyle, and Tyler. I thought this was pointless. I really did, because... We knew this wasn't going anywhere. The only thing that I thought was interesting was we found out that Lissa's mom doesn't give a shit about her at all. All she cares about is her adopted brother, Tyler. That's all that her mother cares about, is Tyler. And uh, that's the only thing that matters to her. So, basically, you know, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. But this whole plot, I just thought was ridiculous. The whole thing with Kyle, I thought that was ridiculous. I did like the Tyler stuff. I will admit that. Kyle, I did not like, because here's my thing with Kyle. Sadie, you have a boyfriend. You do. You have Austin. So if I was Sadie, knowing that, you know, Sadie has a boyfriend, she should have asked Austin to do, because Austin's right there. He would have been fine. He would have done it for her. You know, Austin's her boyfriend, so why not just have Austin do it? This whole Kyle thing was ridiculous. I thought it was completely ridiculous, and I did not like that at all. Um, it kind of was just like, this is what made it the worst episode of the season for me, was that whole thing going on there. Lissa and Tyler, I enjoyed that overall, because it showed that Lissa's a good big brother to Tyler, and as a result, you know, Tyler actually ended up winning the competition, and Lissa cheered for him, and she was really happy for him. I liked that. I, I enjoyed seeing that. I enjoyed seeing that Lissa accomplished something, and I like seeing that Lissa was actually not as dumb as we all thought she was. She actually did something intelligent in this episode. She helped out her brother win a competition. I thought that was really impressive, because 
Most times they show Lissa as the dumb blonde on this show. That's how they, they show her on this show. But in this episode, we saw her actually have a really big heart and actually really want to help her brother and actually want to make him win because she really cared about this. And it was something that she knew her brother cared about as well. So she really wanted to help him. And, you know, she knows that he cared about this. So she wanted to help him with that. And I thought that was actually really, really good the way they did that. So that was probably, um, I really enjoyed that overall. I, I, that was good. The Sadie and Kyle stuff, though, was ridiculous. The whole thing with uh, Kyle, um... I mean, he had a dream while he was eating sushi, and that was human flesh, and then he liked it. That was just weird. Honestly, that was that was ridiculous. I don't know what the point of that was. But overall, this episode was still really, really good. It was not as bad as Touch by an Angel. Touch by an Angel was the most pointless episode of the season. I'm just going to admit that. Touch by an Angel was the most pointless episode. This episode, yes, it was also pointless, but it wasn't the worst episode of the season. Touch by an Angel still is. Um, again, my only complaint is the Eva stuff. However, next week's episode looks like it's probably going to be the best episode of the season because now Eva is back in the next episode. She's going to talk about that photo. Say going to talk to her about that photo. Maddie's going to also talk to her about the phone. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens there. Also, um, now that Maddie knows the whole thing with Jenna and Luke, do you think this is going to be the thing that make, possibly makes Maddie think, I do have something to care about. I do have something to live for. I want to win Jenna back. Or do you think it's too late for him? I personally think it's too late. I think it's too late, and I don't think Jen and Maddie are getting back together at all, ever. Because Jen is matured, he's not mature. I'm going to admit that right now. Maddie is not mature, he's immature. And what I like about this episode is, we got to see the difference. There was a lot of comparisons in this episode. A lot of comparisons between Jenna and Maddie's situation, and Tamara and Jake. The difference is that Jenna is a mature one. And Jake is a mature one when it comes to Tamara and Jake. Tamara's the immature one, and Maddie's the immature one. These two characters are really starting to fall apart a little bit, and I actually kind of enjoy that, because I think Tamara, honestly, she's not going to get into college. I've talked about this before, because what matters to her is not really the most important thing. Is that what matters to her, she doesn't really care about. She cares about what's happening now, not what's happening in the future, when Jenna really does care about that. What do you think of Luke also? I'm really enjoying his character. I think he's a great character for Jenna, and I really like his character. He's probably the best new character since Bailey, you know. I like Eva. I think she's a good character, but I prefer Luke over Eva. Luke's just a better character, in my opinion. I, I think Eva's a great character. I love the whole twist with Eva, but I never know if I can trust Eva. Luke, I know I can trust because he's just so great to Jenna. My only other complaint is, do you think they should just get rid of Aunt Allie? Honestly, I do. I think she some of the stuff she said in this episode was completely ridiculous, and I hated all the time that she was, like, shouting in the audience. It was completely ridiculous. What do you think of the Lissa and Tyler stuff? I thought that was I thought that was good. Um, but the Kyle and Sadie stuff I thought was ridiculous. But that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. My next review will be for Fargo. So see you guys for that. Bye.